Sometimes when I'm working with a brand or a business, one of the early questions will be, um, do you know this industry? And there'll be a question about whether or not, um, how do we look at what other people are doing in the industry and make sure that we are, um, I guess, doing those things or in line with those things. And what I find often is that entrepreneurs are, are very focused on copying uh, and they're very focused on compliance. You know, let's make sure we conform with everything else that everyone is doing, but are often not thinking about insight and creativity or innovation. Now, I think in many ways, businesses in certain industries have a lot of similarities, no question about it. But businesses in certain industries should also look outside of their industry so that they can understand how they might apply proven lessons and proven uh, solutions from other markets in their industry. Um, the question is, who else is solving this problem? And in some cases, it's, it's not the industry per se, it's not the category per se, but it's looking at the niche a little differently. It isn't that you're in automobiles or you're in leather goods or you're in r retail clothing or musical instruments even or, or furnishings. It's that all of these businesses are catering to a business of a certain demographic and a certain mindset. And so w once you look at it that way, you can begin to borrow from other markets and, and understand how to apply proven solutions that work in another market in your market. Now I'm giving you some insight into what I do. <laughs> that's what I, it's one of the things I do when I work with these high-end brands, uh, these brands in uh, um, luxury, bespoke luxury, premier businesses. I look to see what can we do that will give this business a greater edge in terms of attracting clients, servicing clients, keeping clients, developing partnerships, uh, marketing uh, effectively. What can we do that will give them a better edge that others might be doing already, that others who are solving a similar problem, maybe in a different category, are doing, or something we can invent that is not currently happening, but could be a nice innovation for this business. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, one, let me give you one example of this. One example is, is what I would call prior ownership. So prior ownership means that um, this product or service has a certain pedigree. It has a certain relevance. It has a certain substance because someone well-respected, well-valued at a certain level shows it before. And this works uh, very well in some markets, but in some markets it isn't used at all. So if you were buying, for example, um, jewelry from, from an estate, right? And what you would do is, someone would say, uh, if it was a very well-known person, they would say, well, this um, bracelet used to belong to a particular person, or this is from their estate. And, and what gives it value is that particular person. But in many markets, uh, prior ownership or even current ownership or current use isn't, isn't even referenced at all. And so the marketers miss an opportunity to leverage something that could increase the value, increase what they ask for it, and give it a certain uh, allure that might not be present if you don't mention it. Now here's the reverse of that. I used to um, uh, play uh, piano, and I still play piano, but I used to do it more seriously when I was growing up. And when I was growing up, one of the instruments that was really just making its way in the U.S. and was just starting to be used in bands was the Yamaha keyboards. Now at the time, 
the Yamaha um, line was very early and I can recall that when I purchased this, actually I didn't purchase it, my mother purchased it, uh, the band leader didn't even want me to play in the band because it was a Yamaha instrument. And his first reaction was, well, who else is using these keyboards? Who else is, is adopting this sound? Because at the time, the, uh, the Fender Rhodes was a very popular electric piano. And so the idea of using this, this other brand that was surfacing was not valued. Now today, Yamaha talks about all of the people who are using their brands all all the all the time, and uh, prior and current use is a is a key factor. You know how does this work in these other categories? So if we we talk about arts and culture, for example, um, here in New York, the uh, Museum of Metropolitan Art will often ref reference that their courtyard, their their sculpture garden, is a favorite amongst. Uh, jazz musicians. It's a favorite amongst New York's elite who like to come and listen to music in the garden. Um, you can do it with attire. You can talk about our clothing has been worn by the uh, industry leaders, the captains of industry. You can talk about that. In automobiles, for example, classic cars, this is something that's done all the time. This, this car used to belong to someone. Well, it doesn't have to always belong to a rock star or someone who's very well known. It could be uh, owned by someone that has a certain level of prestige. You know, it could be a CEO of a particular firm. It could be someone from a particular industry. You know, the, the old joke about this was driven very little. It's a real cream puff. It was owned by a, a little old lady from Pasadena. You can reverse that and not make it a cliche, but really talk about the kind of person who owned it and the kind of person who purchases this uh, automobile. Um, leather goods, you know, our bags have been carried by CEOs and chief financial officers and deal makers for centuries. Uh, the person who did this great legal deal was someone who was carrying one of our bags. So there are many different ways you can tackle this. In, in, in jewelry, it's done all the time, where uh, you know, Rolex will talk about the, the, um, the, the legendary heritage of the brand and how um, uh, kings you know, wore this watch and wear this watch and, and so forth. So the point here is that you don't want to just copy what other people are doing. You want to see how do I um, make sure that I'm making the right decision when it comes to referencing these things in the sales process, in the marketing process. And am I doing it for the right reasons? Am I doing it just to comply? Am I doing it just to conform? Am I doing it just to copy? Or is there some sound value that I can borrow from my market or another market that will position, position me very well? This is what I call prior ownership. And there are many ways that businesses are both different and the same. And if you look at your business more um, strategically, and, and say, well, how do I look at what I'm doing uh, in, a, in, a, in a more dynamic way and apply these principles rather than just copying what other people are doing? You'll have more impact in the market. You'll have more impact, impact in the sales process. And your business will and your brand will stand out because the very things you put in the mouth of the prospect, they will used to justify their own purchase and to uh, call attention to the great choices that they made in selecting your brand. If you like this tip, let me know that you liked it. Give me a thumbs up. Share it with someone in your network. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and I will see you next time.